Hi, I'm Maya and welcome to my channel. So before I begin, I'll explain about my voice. Um, I have a problem with my vocal cords um, and it's going to take a long time to heal. So if I wait until they're healed before I make a video, I'll be waiting a long time. So please excuse my croakiness. So why am I making a video in the first place? Why am I a 50 year old transsexual putting content on YouTube where there is plenty of content from trans people already. So over the last 20 years since I transitioned, um, I've seen the cultural narrative around gender identity and transition change drastically. And I think some of those changes haven't been healthy and that there are things missing from the conversation that we're having around gender identity and transition. So. I think we're living in a time where it's never been easier to access so much information, yet so difficult to discern what's true or to find meaningful, honest information. So um, I think the time for being an innocent bystander, just watching the confusion and chaos, that time is long gone. So if I think something's missing from the conversation, I don't participate then I think that's worse than, than doing nothing. It's, it's enabling a false narrative to continue without at least contributing to try and uh, add, add my voice to that conversation. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, and for me to do this, um, for my own sense of uh, integrity and for it to have as much value as possible, I need to be as truthful as I possibly can. Now that means I'm not going to censor myself and some of what I'm going to say may be difficult to hear, may be offensive, may be upsetting, um, but I'll never be cruel and I'll always be as honest as I can be. Um, one thing I'm going to try not to do as well, which is difficult, is to make sweeping statements about trans people as a whole. Um, but, you know, I have an informed opinion on this. I am transsexual and I've had 50 years to think about it. So, you know, I think my, my opinion is valid. And I don't know whether it's a generational thing, but my opinion seems to be much more rooted in objective reality than, than what I see nowadays. Um, and that's going to be largely what I'm going to talk about is finding a sense of balance an objective reality with living with th this condition. Um, one thing that I've never felt the need to do is to delude myself into thinking I'm a, I'm a real woman. I never did. Even when I was five or six years old and I wanted to transition, I knew you could transition then. And I knew that I would. I knew that I wasn't a woman. And even all the way through three years of therapy, I knew that I wasn't a woman, never felt the need to, to say, use that um, familiar term trapped in the wrong body or anything like that. So I think that's why um, my view seems to be quite different to other people's. I think it diminishes what it is to be a woman and it's quite insulting um, to, to diminish womanhood to cosmetic surgery and just physically altering my body to, to mimic it. It's just, I think that's insulting and I would never do that. Um, so, so what has changed? <clears throat> so when I see the plethora of identity um, groups, and I see people through no fault of their own just doing their best to find something tangible, something stable in themselves to say, okay, right, this is me. This is me. And, and then they wear that idea as their primary identification of who they are. That's why we have all these different groups. But that is also why that their 
resilience um, is so delicate and when they are not affirmed or confirmed by the rest of society they find that a life or death um, threat so what I've learned on my journey as a transsexual person and that's that journey has taken me to some very extreme places because I after 10 years of post transition of reveling in this form and enjoying life I felt that I needed to find some deeper answers to the to the nature of my own identity so that took me into some wild places and here comes my dog <laughs> hello come on sit down so that took me to some wild places and I think only when you live in nature um, do you realize just how unhelpful all these ideas and stories that we tell ourselves are so nature is objective reality and anything you bring into a natural environment in a sense of ideas of identity and stories of self then those ideas if they're not rooted in that very same objective reality that nature provides are going to separate you from life and in a way you're creating a false reality in your own head that's what I see in identity politics and that's why it's not robust it's not resilient and it's so delicate so what I found is that the further I looked inward to find some reality some truth to my identity I just found layers and layers and layers of stories and ideas and the deeper I looked to find some truth in myself the less I found and that's a very liberating thing if you can go through the pain of letting go of all these ideas that you're holding on to as some sort of stable reality in, in your sense of self I know this is a really big thing to talk about especially in the first video but I think in a way being transsexual has been a gift because it's transition showed me what I am not not what I am surgery did not suddenly make me into the reality of who I am it showed me what I'm not I'm not silicon tits I'm not surgically altered face I'm certainly not a surgical wound that looks like a vagina it's superficial so you know these are the things I'm going to be talking about in um, subsequent videos how to find a sense of peace when you live with this contradiction I am biologically male objectively male yet driven compelled in what felt like a life or death um, need to undergo all the surgery and, and to change my body to live as a woman so how do you live with that contradiction how do you live with that how do you find a sense of balance when there is that conflict it's very difficult so but I think it's a far healthier way to be to live um, being honest with yourself even if that is painful at times so one more thing I want to say in this first video and then I'll leave it is that and this should give you a flavour of what I'm going to talk about is that I think we have drifted over the last 20 years since I transitioned we've drifted into an accepted brutality there are many brutalities that we accept in modern life how we treat animals how we treat old people how we treat each other um, medical interventions that are in fact torture so one of the key and most obvious insanities of modern culture is transitioning children this is a difficult area because there are people who have known from 
their earliest memories I knew but I still don't think it's right to transition until you're older you need to be certain you need to go through puberty you need to to get at least get to young adulthood so this accepted insanity of transitioning children and allowing them as young as 12 or 13 to surgically alter their bodies is the pinnacle of the brutality of our culture I think and I say brutality because because the, the surgery is framed as a treatment um, of facilitating this becoming who the children really should be or the adults really should be and so it's this fairy tale kind of caterpillar chrysalis to the caterpillar to the chrysalis to the butterfly sort of process we accept it but take it from me a person that's had all the surgery it is brutal and if I consider objectively what that surgery has done to my body then um, it's, it's a difficult thing to deal with why would a person do that to themselves so um, you know to be brutally honest a hole has been forced between my rectum and my bladder anchored into my body and sheathed with the the skin that used to be my genitals so that's not a delicate procedure and when you have the surgery you have to do what's called dilate for three months well you have to dilate for a long time but but every three times a day every day for three months and so when I first transitioned stupidly <laughs> stupidly lying on my back one day with this plastic dilator inside me um, and a mirror between my legs I thought oh it's a clear plastic dilator I'll just have a look at and see what it looks like inside and I shone a torch inside and I could see through the plastic dilator right up into my body and there was this spiral of these thick black stitches just anchoring it all inside me so when you hear people trans women saying that they're no different to a real woman and that they have a, a vagina and that they are women what I've just described to you is not a vagina any more than they are real women so I think it's really important to be honest about this that is self-delusion so what we have is a change in the cultural narrative around gender identity being driven by activism and supported by rich transgendered people financing these things where we have a deluded minority of people who simply cannot face the truth of their own conflict and those people are controlling the narrative and forcing the rest of society to collude in their own delusion so any trans person I'm sure is aware of that feeling you get before you can pass con convincingly and you interact with people who aren't trans and they very kindly um, call you she and they know that what you are but they know that also that you are seeking to be seen as a woman and that they are prepared to um, in a way help you in that dynamic so that never sat well with me because I think if they have to do that then I'm clearly not projecting uh, what needs to be projected for them to assess me as a female so I was very aware of them colluding in my delusion or a delusion as they saw it I, I never felt the need to, to delude myself so yeah I think it's important that we just more people talk about this because we are living in denial we are completely living in denial everybody knows that apart from this deluded minority okay so I'll leave it there I'm quite sure I've said enough in this first video um, 
like I said, I'm going to be as honest as I can be. And I really hope that there is some value in this. This doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like this. You don't have to delude yourself. You can still find an authentic self-expression and self-acceptance if you are transsexual and you feel the need to, to transition and have all the surgery, you can still find a sense of peace and balance and live a productive life without trying to alter everybody else's reality. So, okay, I think that's enough of the first video. So hopefully I'll see you guys again in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll, I'll see you soon.